All right, so today what we're gonna discuss is a TRM product and what applications and benefits that you'd see this um, being fitted and used in. So TRM stands for a trailer row train module. So its primary design was to be fitted to any towing trailer to be able to split the power and the can communication from the front coupling through to the local TEBS and then out the back to the rear coupling. The TRM can also be fitted with two pressure transducers in the control line to convert a pneumatic signal to an electronic signal. The reason we utilise two pressure sensors is so that they can cross check against each other um, to make sure you're not getting a false brake intervention. The other application that you'll find the TRM is fitted to a prime mover, specifically a North American prime mover that doesn't have EBS function. So if the truck doesn't have an EBS function, there's no way to get an electronic sit brake signal from that prime mover down to the towing trailers behind it. So we utilise the TRM fitted with those pressure transducers in the pneumatic service control line. So when the uh, driver makes a brake application, it will convert the pneumatic signal to electronic and be able to deliver that message down the combination. So what we're going to try and display here is some real evidence about what that kind of time benefit is when you're having a can brake signal for the trailers and a fully pneumatic control signal to the trailers. So what we've got set up here is a couple of A double combinations. We've got a towing A trailer at the start, towing dolly in the middle and another towing A trailer at the end. And what we'll do is we'll do some comparison tests of how quick the electronic control signal is at the top versus a fully pneumatic control signal at the bottom. So each trailer is set up with their TRM suited for trailer to split the power and can. We've got an R6 relay valve to convert that pneumatic control signal in to the local TEBS on that trailer, but also send it to the rear trailer behind. Then we've got a KB TEBS brake module which what we've done is fitted this pressure sensor on the output side that will normally run to your uh, wheel end or your boosters. And that pressure switch will activate these green lamps that you can see fitted on the board. So whenever these green lamps are illuminated, it means that TEBS module is having a brake output application. So as we come down the uh, brake boards here, we'll see we've got a timing display um, at the end. So what we're gonna do is we've got these two pressure sensors at the end wired into this um, timing board as well. So there'll be a couple of lights that will light up on this display to show which brake module actually applies the brake first. So if the top one is to apply the brakes first, you'll see the red light start up here. That will begin the counter. So the counter will start counting. Once this bottom uh, module applies a brake output force, it will signal the counter to stop, and that will show the time difference between the canned brake trailer at the top versus the fully pneumatic signals down the bottom. Once we've run through a few tests, what we'll do, we'll set up the whole combination as a full six axle group road train. So we'll connect these rear couplings of the A trailer here to the front couplings down the bottom, and we'll measure some control timing from the uh, input at the headboard to how long it takes to get um, to the six trailer down the back. We'll do that both powered and powered to show you what that timing difference is. Now with the timing, we obviously want to work out what that is relation to in the real world. So we'll convert that timing into a meter distance if the combination was traveling about 100 k's an hour. So the first, demonstration we'll do, we'll do a full pneumatic brake application on both sets, top and bottom, to show that we're not trying to rig the system to um, give unfair advantages to the CAN um, circuit up the top. And that will come up with the time difference. So I'll apply just a hand input here, so not from the prime mover. We'll go through to the control signal here, which is teed off going to both um, top and bottom combination, so they're both receiving the exactly the same signal. So I'll apply the brake, the two timers, the two pressure switches have activated and shown that we've got a 0.081 second difference between the two. So the top module 
has got an output pressure first, the timer has started, then the bottom module has switched the timer to stop, and we've got a 0 0.081 time. So that time, what we'll do is have that as our control time, and we'll subtract that from any measurements that we get so we're not being biased to the CAN um, setup that we've got in front of us. So what I'll do, I'll just connect the service brake input for your blue line up to the truck and we'll do a timing test for the brake application. So we've got Ewan in the truck that will apply the brakes for us and we'll see what um, time difference we get there. So Ewan, can you just do a normal brake application for us please? So we've seen here the top module has activated the brakes first and it's taken 0 0.734 seconds for the second module to um, activate. So if we take that point 0.081 away from 7.34, so 0 0.734 minus 0 0.081 gives us a time of 0 0.653 seconds. So taking away that control time in that we had at the start gives us a measurement. So this combination up here, 0 0.65 seconds quicker than the combination down below. So you might think that that's not very long. What kind of a reaction would that have on a combination? The combination's traveling at 100 kilometers an hour down the road. It's moving at a pace of 28 meters per second. So if we times 28 by 0 0.653, we get a distance of 18.2 meters. So it means that this combination down below would travel 18.2 meters further before the brakes started to apply on this rear module compared to the top one. So another test what we'll do is we want to resemble what a light brake application will do. So the reason we run through this is to show you what the effects of crack pressures have in a combination. So each of these relay valves have a crack pressure um, inside and the crack pressure is what pressure it takes for the control signal to overcome any mechanical or spring force within the valve before it will start outputting um, a pressure signal to the TEBs and to the rear trailers. So if there's a crack pressure within this valve, the second and the third, they will all start to compound together and you'll get delays within uh, the combination down the bottom. So under light braking, if you're just trying to wipe off a couple of kilometers, come back to the speed limit, the driver will just make a light brake pedal application. So what we'll do is we'll try to uh, um, mimic that on the boards and show you what the difference is between CAN and pneumatic. So we'll do a rear light application. So what you can see here is the top combination has all applied the brakes at the same time and we've got output forces to each one. Down on the bottom combination, we've only managed to apply the brakes on the first trailer. And that's because the buildup of crack pressures. So it's got enough control line signal to overcome the crack pressure in the first relay valve and apply the brakes on the TEBS module, but there's not enough pressure in that control line to overcome the second one and then apply the brakes on the second trailer. So in this instance, as the driver is going down that slight descent to wipe a couple of kilometers off, he'll lightly apply the brakes expecting that combination to come to a nice brake event together, but he'll get the effect of the rear two trailers pushing that combination down the hill slightly. So it ends up creating compounding heat in that first trailer and the steer axles of the truck. But when you've got an electronic control signal, that light brake application is sent direct to each module with the same demand as well. There's no delay in any of the signal and there's also no pressure loss in that signal as well. Release Ewan, thanks. So that's the benefits of a TRM in an A double combination. What we want to do now is show you what those compound effects have over a multi axle group combination that we can resemble with six trailers. So I'll do a couple of plumbing changes just so we can have that um, connected up.
and we'll disconnect the TRM so there's no power to each of the TEBS module. So we'll do a test full pneumatic and then we'll plug the trailers back in and do a test that's got the service brake signal from the prime mover on the can line. So in this setup, what we want to be doing is measure the time difference from a service brake signal at the front coupling all the way down to the last trailer in the combination, so the sixth trailer down here. So I've just got to change over the pressure switches that we're using to get that timing signal, which we've done below, and reset that board. So what we'll do now, we'll just do a normal brake application and see what the timing is from the front coupling down to the last trailer. So we'll just apply the brakes, Ewan. So the time's here. So we've got 1.495 seconds. It's taken from an application pressure at the front coupling to reach and have an output down at the bottom or the last trailer. One thing to focus on as well is how those applications um, were carried out. So did they all simultaneously, simultaneously come on together or was there a delay and a lag in these um, axle groups applying the brakes? So we'll get Ewan to do it again. To do a gradual increase in brake pressure, hold it and then we'll need to release it and we'll see how those brakes release as well. So as you can see here, the brake applications weren't all together as one. We got trailer one braking, trailer two, three, so on and so forth. So that's overcoming the crack pressure in each of the relay valves. And then we'll see what happens when he releases the brake as well. So you can see all of the axle group applications didn't exhaust simultaneously together. They had to wait for all of the air in the system to exhaust out the front and we saw release of trailer one, then trailer two, trailer three and so on and so forth. So what that means in a real life scenario, if the driver applies the brakes, he'll feel the trailers pushing the combination forward still until it can overcome the crack pressures in the relay valves and start to apply those brakes. When he comes off the brake pedal and jumps on the accelerator and wants to start driving away again, He's waiting for those axle groups to release the brakes. So he's trying to drive forward while the combination's pulling him back. So it's not very good. So what we'll do, we'll plug all the modules in. We'll get that electronic brake signal and we'll see how the combination brakes and operates. All right, so previously we had a pneumatic control time of 1.495. Now all the modules are powered up. We'll do a brake demand from the driver and we'll see what happens with the electronic signal. As you can see here, 0 0.209 seconds. So we'll work out what that is in a distance going from a 1.495 application, fully pneumatic. 1.495, we'll deduct the 0.209. So it gives us a difference in timing of 1.286 seconds. So if we times that by 28 to give us our metre distance, it's 36 metres. So a 36 metre difference from when this module will start to apply the brakes if it's powered or unpowered, not receiving that can signal. So it's a massive distance that that combination can be travelling um, before these rear brakes start to apply if it's just got the pneumatic control signal. So it's something that you really need to think about when you're running these kinds of combinations around. So what we'll have a look at lastly in the demonstration is how those trailers apply and release the brakes as well. So before we had the trailers 
One, two, three, powering up, one after the other to apply those brakes. And the same instance when the brakes were released as well. Trailer one would release the brakes, then trailer two, and so on. But now I want you to have a look, when Ewan hits the brakes, how those trailers actuate the brakes, if they all come on at once or if it's the same staggered approach. So we'll apply the brakes. So as we see there, they all came on instantaneously and all at the same time, which means all the trailers are braking as one. There's no delay and you won't feel that the trailers are pushing you when you're applying those brakes, waiting for the um, valves to open up and overcome those crack pressures. Now we'll do the same test on the release. And we can see the same effect. It's instantaneous and they all release the brake at the same time as well. So when the driver jumps off the foot brake and jumps back on the accelerator, he's not gonna feel the combination pulling him back, waiting for those brakes to release. So that really helps with the compatibility of the whole system as one. So when we're on the fact of compatibility, um, we'll have a discussion about what kind of programming is within the KB TEBS modules and how that can then help the compatibility as well. So the way EBS Prime Movers, European Prime Movers brake is totally different to the way that Air um, North American Prime Movers brake as well. The EBS trucks will be load sensed, different onset characteristics and also have the CAN signal as standard. The North American Prime Movers, they've got lower onset pressures. The trucks are one-to-one -one braking, they don't have load sensing, and they can or cannot come with the TRM fitted for that electronic signal. So it means that your trailer needs to be set up to either tow behind a North American or an EBS one. So which, I guess, braking parameters do you choose to match up to get the best compatibility through that system? So with the KB TEBS module, we can actually program two load sense characteristics into the module itself. So we can program one end to suit a European prime mover with 0.7 bar onsets, load sense braking outputs, and it will utilize the CAN signal. And then our other braking characteristics that we'll program in is to sort, suit our North American prime movers. So a lower onset pressure of 0.5, it will break one to one on its output um, and it will utilize the um, CAN signal if it's there and available. So the question is, how does it know what truck is towing it at the start? It all depends on what CAN messages it receives down the ISO line. So if the module powers up and it sees the necessary CAN messages coming from the European Prime Mover, it will select the correct characteristics to suit it. So the load sense characteristics with the different onsets. If the module's powered up to just a five pin uh, EBS plug or a EBS plug with seven pins but it's only got the TRM fitted on the prime mover, it will change to its other load sense characteristics. So the one with 0.5, one to one braking and uh, will utilize that CAN signal if it is available. So with the KB TEBS module fitted to the trailers, it's much, much more compatible in mixed trailer fleets when they're swapping around between prime movers and you get those benefits of the braking effect through the electronic signal when North American based prime movers are fitted with the TRM and electronic timing.